If you're thinking about keeping a saltwater aquarium or a reef tank, one of the most important things you can do to guarantee the health and success of your tank is to ensure that your seawater is actually of the proper salinity. The way you do that is most people, this is probably the most common method for measuring a salinity, is a refractometer. And this is gonna give you a readout in about 30 to 35 parts per thousand range. Um, but not all of these are created equal, so it's very important that you calibrate or at least are familiar with the concept. So this is a widely available calibration solution from Brightwell. You basically put a drop on here, read it, and make sure that the seawater you're using or your aquarium has the same reading as this calibration solution. You should do this whether you make your own salt or you buy some salt from the store because everybody makes mistakes so it's really important to get that salinity right. I actually have a lot of different salinity measurement tools, but this year, Hannah released their salinity checker, and this is a conductivity meter that you simply turn on and place in the water, and it's gonna tell you the temperature and the salinity. This thing does need to be calibrated as well, but it's a lot more accurate than anything else on the market, and Hannah's also made it waterproof, so there's no chance or trouble if you drop it in the tank. You cannot over uh, emphasize the importance of, of measuring proper salinity and proper temperature and now it's time to mix up some seawater. So a 20 gallon tank is about the volume of water where you're going to really have to make a choice of whether you should mix your own seawater or buy it from the store. If you have a reputable fish store that makes good filtered seawater um, for about a 20 gallon tank, a 30 gallon tank, it's really convenient and it's nice to visit the fish store once in a while just to pick up five or 10 gallons of water. But just for posterity, we are going to mix up our own seawater. This is purified water. There's lots of ways to purify fresh water straight out of your tap. Lots of videos on YouTube on that, but today we're going to talk about mixing up. And this is Accuracy One. This was created and it's mixed by Julian Sprung. His, his contributions to the hobby are well documented. But besides the cleanliness of this salt, if you have a small tank, this is probably one of the few salts you should get because it comes pre-packaged in these five gallon bags. I think this is technically four and a half gallon. It depends on the salinity that you want to mix it up. But we have about 10 gallons of water in here. So nominally, to mix it up, all you have to do is this little tear strip right there. And you can use a power head to mix it up, or you can just use your hand. And you know, just kind of spread it around. Spread it around just like that. Just like that. And uh, the accuracy one is just a really easy salt, but there's lots of salts you can use. But this is the only one that really comes pre-measured in these uh, five gallon to four and a half gallon bags. Arguably more important than salinity is the temperature of the aquarium water. Whether you bought a $5 stick-on thermometer or a $100 digital readout thermometer, it's really important to have a lot of temperature measurement tools and always be suspicious of your heater because nowadays there's no telling what the temperature is actually going to be. So I've taken to basically calibrating all of my aquarium heaters. I'll run them in a bucket for overnight, try to figure out what temperature they run relative to the dial that it's set for. But uh, uh, Eheim, the former Ebo Jaeger, is the only company that actually has a calibration dial on the top that allows you to get it in the proper range. And there's other videos on YouTube um, to get that correct. So what is the proper temperature for a marine aquarium? I know a lot of folks uh, probably aim for about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a common tropical temperature. I like to run my tanks uh, just a a little bit lower just to reduce evaporation and reduce energy cost because it's kind of cool here in Colorado. Okay so we've had our seawater mixing for about an hour. This is kind of the minimum that I like to recommend people mix their water for but most people will recommend 24 hours for full mixing and I guess that really depends on your salt mix but with the accuracy one it mixes up clear mixes up fast but more important than how long you mix it is to make sure you double and triple check your salinity. So we're going to give this a quick test and see what it turns out to be. 
We're aiming for about 33, but uh, up or down a few points is not that much. So 31 parts per thousand, not too bad. So now it's time for one of the funnest parts of setting up a reef tank is when we first put the water in and get to turn off get to turn on all of the equipment and the tank really comes to life. So let's get on that. All right, you guys, we have assembled the stand. We put the tank in place. We put, installed all the equipment, connected the new reef lead. We talked about aquascaping principles. We hammered home the point of having proper salinity and proper temperature. Now we have our tank all filled. And it's time for the moment of truth. The moment your return pump comes alive, the moment your pump comes on, the tank comes alive. I hope you guys are as excited as we are to start putting our, some corals in this brand new miniature reef aquarium. So definitely don't wanna miss the next video. Subscribe, comment, and like. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments down below and we'll catch you on the next video.